So we will see the next concept, relative speed. So relative speed is a comparative speed between two moving bodies. Say suppose if a car is moving with a speed of 40 km per hour and a bus also in the same direction so with a speed 50 km per hour. Now speed of the bus with respect to the car is 10 km per hour that is difference in speeds. If suppose they are moving in the opposite direction so now speed of the bus with respect to the car will be equal to 90 km per hour which is sum of the speeds. Say suppose if two moving bodies so move with speeds S1 and S2 we have to calculate the relative speed when they are moving in same direction and in opposite direction. So if they are moving in same direction so then the relative speed will be So difference of speeds taken by the two moving bodies. If suppose they move in opposite direction, so then relative speed will be sum of speed of the two moving bodies. So when they move in same direction, it is different between the speeds. So whichever is higher we subtract. And for opposite direction, so you can remember this plus sign. So it will be so intersecting line. So speed will be sum of their speeds. So when you are calculating two moving bodies with speed S1 and S2, so you have to calculate the relative speed that is speed comparing to the other moving body. So for same direction it is different and for opposite directions it is plus. So the main concept of relative speed is what is the distance covered by a faster moving body in a particular time. Say suppose speed of two persons is S1 and S2 in one hour. So when you check, they will be S1 plus or minus S2 kilometer apart. So this is the main concept of relative speed. So based on that we will be doing the working. If suppose as seen earlier, if speed of two persons is 40 and 50. So if they are moving in same direction, so here speed is 40 km per hour and another moving body speed is 50 km per hour. So if they move in same direction, in one hour when you check, this person covers 40 km the other person covers 50 kilometers. Now what is the difference between these two persons? It is difference in the speed. That is 10 kilometer per hour. 10 kilometer. So in one hour they will be S1 minus S2 kilometers apart. So for same direction it is difference in speed will be the distance between them. Suppose if they move in opposite direction. So this person will cover 40 kilometers. The other person would have covered 50 kilometers in the opposite direction. So what will be the distance between them? It is 90 kilometers. So when they move in opposite direction, distance between them will be sum of their speeds. So in one hour they will be S1 plus S2 kilometer apart. So based on this, based on this we will be working all the train questions and the boat questions. Say for example, So if two persons are taking speed 3 kilometers per hour and 3.5 kilometers per hour. So suppose if they are walking in the same direction. So what will be the distance between them after 3 hours? So all these types of questions are asked. So here speed is 3 kilometers per hour and the other person's speed is 3.5 kilometers per hour. 
So you are asked to find distance between them after three hours. So when you check the speed in one hour, this person can cover 0.5 kilometer more than the other person. So in one hour, 0.5 more. So what will be the distance between them after three hours? So it is three into 0.5. So there will be 1.5 kilometers apart after 3 hours. So based on this relative speed concept, so we can work out all this question. So we will see a few examples using this concept. So we will see this example. A theft happened at 4 a.m. and it was found at 6 a.m. The thief runs away immediately after the theft in a car whose speed is 50 kilometers per hour. As soon as the theft was found, a policeman chases the thief in a jeep with a speed of 70 km per hour. When will the thief be caught by the policeman? So in this question, the theft has happened at 4 a.m. and it was found at 6 a.m. So after how many hours was the theft found? So it was found, it is found after 2 hours. So the thief runs away in the car as soon as the theft, after uh, robbing. So his speed is 50 kilometers per hour. So by the time the theft was found, it is 2 hours and he will be 100 kilometers away from the police. Now at 6 o'clock, the theft is found and the policeman starts chasing him and his speed is 70 kilometers per hour. So now we have to find at what time or after how many hours the thief is caught. So we will see the working. So the theft happens at 4 and it is found at 6 a.m. So as soon as the theft has happened, the thief starts running and his speed is 50 kilometers per hour. So per hour he, he is 50 kilometers away from the place and in 2 hours he will be 100 kilometers away from the place. So now at 6 o'clock, when the, when the theft is found, the police is here and the thief is 100 km away from the police. At 6 o'clock, the police also starts chasing him. So at some future point, the police will catch the thief because speed of the police is more than speed of the thief. So what is speed of the police? It is 70 km per hour. And here speed of the thief is 50 kilometers per hour. So as speed of the police is more than the speed of the thief, at some future point the police will catch the thief. So at this point, both will meet. So at this time, the police has to cover 100 kilometers more than the thief. So now when you check, the th check their speed, the police can cover 20 more than the thief in one hour. So at their meeting point, the police has to cover 100 kilometers more than the thief. So with their basic speed, the police can cover 20 kilometers more than the thief in one hour. So it is not just uh, 70 or 20, it is 20 more. The police in one hour, he can cover 70. By the time the thief also moves 50 km, so the police can cover 20 more than the thief in one hour, so to cover 100 km more. So only when he covers 100 more, police can catch the thief. So to cover 100 more, so what will be the time needed? So just it will be in proportion, so 100 divided by 20. So in 5 hours the police will catch the thief. So you are asked to find the time. So add this 5 hours with 6 a.m. So time will be 11 a.m. So at 11 a.m. the thief is caught. So here as they move in same direction, we are calculating the relative speed and working. So by this relative speed we come, the, we know that the police can cover 20 more than the thief. So to cover 100 more, he needs 5 hours. So after 5 hours the thief is caught. So here the shortcut is, so you see what is the distance covered by the police more than the thief in one hour. The police can cover 20 kilometer more than the thief in one hour. 
So to cover 100 more, he will need 5 hours. So the thief is caught after 5 hours. So we will see another example using this relative speed concept. So our next example is, two trains from A and B move towards each other with speed 80 km per hour and 70 km per hour. At their meeting point, the faster train has covered 40 km more than the slower train. Find the distance between A and B. So in this question, two trains from A and B move towards each other. So speed of both the trains are 80 km per hour and 70 km per hour. So we will uh, take that the train which starts from A, its speed is 80 km per hour and the train which starts from B, its speed is 70 km per hour. As the train which starts from A speed is more, it will cover more distance than the slower train. So which starts from B. So at their meeting point, so the faster train has covered 40 km more than the slower train. So you are asked to find distance between A and B. So we will see the working. So we will place that there are two places A and B. So from A the faster train starts and its speed is 80 km per hour. And from B another train starts. So its speed is 70 km per hour. So they are moving towards each other. So at some point they meet. So at this meeting point, so it is given that the faster train has covered 40 km more than the slower train. See suppose the slower train has covered x km. So what will be the distance covered by the faster train? It will be x plus 40. So as it is covering 40 more, Distance covered by the faster train will be x plus 40. So the faster train is covering 40 more. So now when you check their speed, the slower train speed is 70 and the faster train speed is 80 which is 10 more. So it means that the faster train can cover 10 more when it runs for 1 hour. So the faster train in one hour can cover 10 km more than the slower train. So but how much more the faster train has covered? It has covered 40 more. So when the trains have travelled for one hour, the faster train cover 10, can cover 10 km more. So to cover 40 km more, for how many hours the trains have travelled? So you can work out the proportion, so direct variation where the cross products are same. So multiplying and dividing we get 4 hours. So the trains have travelled for 4 hours only then the faster train would have covered 40 more than the slower train. Say for example if they give us 30 more so in 1 hour 10 more for 30 more how many hours they would have travelled? 3 hours. So here it is 40 more so they would have travelled 4 hours for 4 hours. So now we are asked to find distance between these two places A and B. So when you find the distance covered by the faster train and the distance covered by the slower train and adding up you get the total distance. So now travel time for these trains is 4 hours. So what will be the distance covered by the faster train? So distance d1 is speed into time taken. So speed is 80 and it has travelled for 4 hours. And d2 is distance covered by the slower train, speed into time again. So multiplying this we get distance covered by the first train and d2 is the distance covered by the second train. By adding you get the total distance. So, or you can find the total distance by using the relative speed concept also. So we have found that the trains had travelled for 4 hours. So to find the distance covered, so distance will be speed into time taken. 
But here you have to calculate the relative speed. So as both the trains are moving in opposite direction, speed will be some relative speed will be sum of their speeds. So relative speed is sum of their speed and time taken is for 4 hours. So here relative speed is 150 into 4, you get 600. So here distance between the two places, we have used the relative speed concept. That is, they are moving in the opposite direction, sum of speeds and time taken is 4. So adding and multiplying, we get 600. So when you calculate the distance separately, it is multiplying and adding, which is both same. So this will be 320 and 280. So which gives you 600 is the distance between the two, two places. So when they are moving in opposite direction, so see that relative speed will be sum of their speeds. And to calculate the distance, relative speed into time taken, you get 600. Or you can work out that distance covered is speed into time by the first train, 320, and speed into time for the second train. Adding up, you get the same distance. So we have seen two examples, one for uh, difference in their speeds and the other for sum of their speeds. So here the working is, the faster train in one hour, it can cover 10 kilometers more than the slower train. So to cover 40 more, they should have traveled for 4 hours. And distance will be relative speed into time taken. Relative speed, as they are moving in opposite directions, it is sum of speeds into time taken. So 150 into 4, 600 kilometers is the distance between the two places. So we will see the next concept.